What's up, expats and travelers alike? I'm Josh with Expats Everywhere. And I'm Kaylee, and welcome to Fado. Now, Fado is the tale of two different cities. Of course, there's the downtown touristy area, but if you're looking to live in Fado, there's a residential side that we're gonna show you here. Let's, Let's go. go. Fado's not very big. It's divided into two civil parishes, Sao Pedro and Se. It's kind of like an east and west divide. But why is this the tale of two Fados? Well, like most cities, you have a place where the tourists flock to, but then you have a place that's a bit more livable. Fado has long been viewed by many as a dull and uninteresting city if you're outside of the historic downtown. It's a place that you come for a day and even a place that you fly into, thanks EasyJet, and then you get the heck out. Some people might stay for a few days and do the normal touristy bits and possibly head out on a boat to some of the islands south of Fado. But outside all of this, there is something going on. There's another group of people that say, hey, over the past five years, Fado is changing. It's becoming more of a desirable place to land and stay not just as a tourist, but as an expat. Why? We weren't exactly sure, but that's what we wanted to figure out. So we started interacting with the locals and talking to expats to try to get a better understanding of it all. And oh, by the way, we walked a lot. When you get out of the old city, or what the tourist office declares the old city, you'll find newer housing that is certainly less traditional. Now when we say traditional, we're talking about stone block housing. But as many of you know, there's also a look and design that more contemporary Portuguese housing has with their small patios in the front and terraces in the back. There are also high rises all across the city, which house local residents and university students alike. There are even some really modern new builds found on wider roads with plenty of space. You can find places outside of the city center for cheaper, such as a one bedroom costing around 500 euros or a three bedroom around 900 euros. Of course, as you move closer to the historic center, prices will jump a bit, but shouldn't be more than 1300 euros for a T2 or T3. Despite all of the walking streets, and by walking streets we mean the pedestrian only streets, near the old town, Fado is certainly a place where a car would be nice, so take that into consideration when planning your budget as gas isn't super cheap in Portugal. Sure, you can get to other towns via the train system, but there are limits, especially when you're looking to go more inland. There are buses too, but ultimately with how spread out things are, it might be worth having a car or just realizing you might want to take an Uber or taxi on a weekly basis to get to places quicker or more efficiently. I wouldn't say there's plenty to do here for young single expats, because you might be stuck meeting tourists on a night out at one of the bars or clubs, or otherwise being hopeful to bump into a younger local and strike up a more long-term relationship. For a slower pace, you can sit at any of the numerous bars, cafes, and restaurants. A coffee can cost as little as one euro outside of the historic center, but might be closer to 250 for a latte in the historic center, for example. Beer and wine will run just a little more than that. For families that don't mind homeschooling or having their kids in a school that's most likely going to be Portuguese speaking, Fado could be a good choice. The city is relatively safe. There are plenty of smaller neighborhood areas with spots for your kids to play and wider sidewalks for strolling. However, there is one quirky thing that we've noticed while strolling Sia around. While the city does have plenty of crosswalks for pedestrians, they seem to put them in inconvenient areas. They don't keep them on the corners for smooth walking, but instead make you walk out of the way to cross, then double back a bit to get back to the road you need to be on. So it's like they reluctantly add crosswalks and make you work for it, or just not use them and cross at a more convenient location. Add that with the slick and uneven sidewalks and it makes it tough with the stroller. As a foreigner, you might be interested in international brands with stores you recognize and clothes that you know that you'll like and that will fit. So rest assured that the Forum Algarve will literally have you covered. Portuguese locals and tourists will be here as well as international visitors to the city as well. 
As many of you know, Josh and I love Little. And the cool thing about this city is even though it's a little spread out, the grocery stores are bigger, which means you might want a car, but it's a bigger grocery store, it has a parking lot, so you can load up your groceries, pop them in your car, and drive home. The good news is that for those of you that like warmer weather and a drier climate, the southernmost point of the Algarve might be for you. June, July, and August can get quite hot, and there's very little rain, especially in the months of June and July. Now let's get to our take on the two photos and if we'd want to expat that. So we're here at a neighborhood cafe and we want to talk to you guys about our impressions of Fado. Would we be expats here? And just that general stuff to give you an indication of how we feel about it and how you might feel about it. What do you think, Kaylee? Well, as usual, I love the cafe culture. So sitting outside right now is really nice. In the shade, it's good. But after being around the city for a little bit, few things that I've noticed that would make it not a place that I would want to live. Okay. We're in June and it is already hot, like really hot. And apparently July gets even hotter. It's really tough with Sia strolling around, trying to get outside, play in parks because it's just so hot. So that's an aspect of it that I don't like. I mean, it's probably better in the winter, but something else that I have found to be a little different, especially compared to Porto, is the people are not as friendly. They're very friendly True. in Porto. There are other parts of Portugal where I find that they are friendly. And here, I don't find the people friendly. What do you think? Well, here's the thing. I think that people in Porto are like syrupy friendly, like syrupy sweet. And I love that. I think that's cool. It's very endearing. It reminds me of back home in the South. Uh, is it genuine? I think it's genuine. Is it genuine in the South? Not always, <laughs> but here, uh, there's like some, some, I don't know if it's tension, but it's it's awkward sometimes. Mm. You will definitely run into some grumpy people. Um, that might happen everywhere. It hasn't happened very often in Porto, but it's happened often here, like 50% of the time. Often it's enough weird. where it's the culture down here. And so to me, that's not my favorite thing. So I would not live in Fado. Regarding the heat, for me, it doesn't bother me as much. I mean, we're in a group of four right now, and I'm probably the one that sweats, sweats the least. <laughs> so. That is what it is. I don't think that I would choose to live here. However, if I needed to live here, I could live here. If you're watching this video just after it was uploaded, then hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you can catch the next video, which will be right here, where we compare two great expat cities in the Algarve. Now let's get moving.